I'll show you an example of this on the following slides. So first, what I'll show you is some data for the wind speed 76 meters above ground level at this U Razor campus. And well, it's just a, a series of wind speeds here covering a bit over a year, a year and a half-ish. Now, what we want to do, we have measurements every 10 minutes, and we want to make forecasts up to three hours. We want to make a 10, 20, and so forth minute forecast up to a 190 minute forecast. Now, if we use the 10 minute forecast here corresponding to L equals to one, then if we then calculate S of alpha for a range of different alphas, what we see is that the higher the alpha that we use, the lower the sum of squared prediction errors. So basically that means we should use something that gives a much higher, most weight on the most recent observation, makes a lot of sense. The best 10 minute estimator is effectively to just use the previous observation. That's what we're told here, or we see from here. Now, if we do look at the seven step prediction up to seven here, and we do the same thing, what we see that the minimum here is quite flat compared to the range here, but the optimal value is around 0 0.7. So that means we put 70% weight on the most recent observation, and then 30% weight on the previous estimate. If we go even further out, what we see when we go into 130 minutes is that we should use something as close to 0 0.6. And if we go out for the three hours and a bit, well, then we are down to using 0 0.5. So that means half the weight on the most recent observation and half the weight on the previous estimate. So this is what you should expect to find, that the longer horizon that you look at, the more memory you want to have in the system. If we then look at how does this actually perform, then at first you may be a little bit surprised because what you see here, the black line here are the actual measurements, the blue is the 10 minute prediction, and the red is the 190 minute prediction. So what it seems to be is that you've just shifted the blue curve a little bit. But remember, we use an alpha of 0 0.95. That means that we're actually using the most recent observation as our 10 minute prediction. So that is effectively what we expect to see. And they are very close. Although not entirely the same, but it is pretty much just a shift. So the prediction one step ahead is effectively just the current value. Now, when we go further ahead, we see that this curve is also resembling a lot of the same information from before, but it's much smoother, say, around the peak there. And this peak is not as high and so forth. So, but it still looks like mostly just a shift. But now we use an alpha of 0.5, which means you have 0.5 weight on the most recent, 0.5 square on the one before, and cubed and to the fourth power and so forth. And we know that that series goes very quickly to zero. So the weight on very old observations is very, very small. So our prediction is again, so our prediction at 2100 here, that is this value, although the true value is up here. So it's not a very good model in this case, but that's the optimal set of parameters. It's a good model whenever the wind speed is stationary, but of course, what we have estimated is a model that is a mean value, so we should not expect it to be good at catching when the wind speed is changing. We should expect that it's good at maintaining a level when the wind speed is oscillating about something. <laughs>